as you know, just a little bit of news around tonight that we should be talking about as well, which includes the garbage, the hot wind that was coming out of the Treasurer today. The Treasurer telling us in the immediate economic financial update thing, basically sort of the halfway budget, that yet again, everything is awesome. Here's what he had to say. After getting very close to a surplus, they will deliver a surplus by this time uh, in May. We will consider the budget conditions and the economic conditions uh, between now and the May budget uh, to see uh, whether uh, we will provide more cost of living help. Uh, but I say to every Australian, uh, under cost of living pressure right now. Uh, one of the best ways that we can get downward pressure on inflation, which is smashing household budgets, is to provide the kind of responsible economic management which is a feature of this budget update. It's garbage. As I've told you many times before, they end up with extra money. I'll explain how much extra money they get, and it's all thanks to you. You struggle. They turn around and say, sorry, but we'll keep taxing you. Um, up the nose. The media, of course, desperate to find the narrative that the government is turning things around after the bad couple of months. Well, they're off and racing. An unexpected tax windfall has put federal labour closer to delivering another budget surplus. Rising wages, falling inflation and a better budget bottom line. That's the verdict as the Treasurer gave his mid-year economic update. The likely plan, that deficit does become a second surplus in the May budget with more cost of living relief then, just in time for the next election. So, of course, all politics, nothing to do with the reality of what you are feeling right now. And this is why people can smell that this thing is, frankly, a bit of a con. Now, let's go through exactly how they ended up getting more revenue than they expected. Unsurprisingly, it comes from tax. And the biggest source of tax for the federal government, it is your average worker. In fact, the best part of an extra $62 billion came their way. And that's why they're now starting to feel that they're getting closer and closer to an inevitable second budget surplus. But again, you don't care whether the government makes a surplus or not. The reality is, is that you want some cost of living relief or you want the government to find ways to take its foot off your neck, particularly when it comes to taxes. Now, again, from the Sydney Morning Herald to the Australian, you can see here that taxes, taxes, taxes was the issue. Reading from one of the accounts, the improvement has been largely driven by much stronger tax collections. This year alone, the government has upgraded its revenue forecast to $328 billion. $328 billion that they are expecting to come via the taxation that comes from you. From you working like a million people are, two jobs. From... Well, the best part of 16, 17 million people working their normal 40 hours a week. Someone working for themselves. The quarterly basses. Tax, tax, tax. All at a time when the government thinks that it knows how to spend your money better than you do when you need more of your money than ever before because everything costs more. And then there's, of course, company taxes. Everything from the biggest of businesses to the smallest of ABNs. Company tax collections have been revised up by $10 billion, or should I say $9.2 billion, to a record $137 billion. So remember, taxation revenue, $328 billion from workers, $139 billion from companies. It is unbelievable. Now, meantime, of course, uh, into the Ford estimates, they think that the numbers might work their way as well, but you don't care about that. Why? Because... The Australian and The Guardian have actually seen through the games of Jim Chalmers. They can see through the games as to who is actually playing here in The Australian. In an inflation crisis, Labor is now squeezing middle Australia for budget repair, and even the Turnbull Times notices it. The federal budget improvement is good news for Jim Chalmers, but households still face the squeeze. Now... We have been told how many times, over how many months, that apparently the number one focus of the government was the same focus as the citizens who are being taxed harder and heavier than ever before. These cost of living pressures are still our biggest challenge. Cost of living pressures yeah. facing Australian families, uh, because that is, of course, uh, the number one issue that the government is focused on. We continue to have as our number one priority uh, cost of living relief. Our government understands the cost of living is the number one pressure on Australian families, which is why help with the cost of living is our number one priority. 
Uh, the government is focused on this cost of living challenge uh, in the economy. So help me out. The two opportunities for the government to spend money to help people through things like reducing the amount of their surplus to pay for things like uh, fuel tax reductions are in the budget or the mid-year economic review. We have now had both and they receive nothing for the middle class. Instead, the decisions that have been made by this government add to the extra pressures that overall lead to the tax burden, including, remember what they have introduced. They have introduced new taxes on heavy vehicle haulage, meaning everything in the shop costs more because the federal government is increasing the tax on the trucks that move it around. Oh, and by the way, if you're in regional areas and you're on a farm, you already know that you're having to pay extra quarantine taxes. And now we learn, now we learn that Labor has actually changed the thresholds for household allowances when it comes to farms if you're in financial difficulties. You see, they know that most likely the people in regional Australia don't vote Labor, so you will be whacked yet again with the government finding a way to make your life harder. And then, in the very same budget, where they're trying to say it's our economic responsibility and we've done everything right, please, sir, may I have some more cost of living relief? No. They're treating you like, the, you know, Oliver. They're increasing the cost when it comes to getting a passport because, God forbid, you'd like to leave the country, maybe be able to go on a holiday sometime soon. Now, it's not a huge amount of money, but, again, these are all just the little ways they tick up their revenue. Tick up, tick up, tick up, tick up, tick up. So they end up with hundreds of billions of dollars in revenue. Now, also, a little change here too. If you're somebody who's got a hybrid car or is trying to buy one of the bigger versions of the hybrid cars because maybe you'd like to get you around with your kids, you've got a bigger family, maybe even you'd like to tow something in a hybrid, well, guess what? There's a new tax on that as well. So all of these people are, are getting close to a surplus. But I'll tell you how they're getting close to a surplus. Because they are inventing new taxes and more people are paying existing taxes. Nothing is happening when it comes to government spending. They are not finding new sources of responsibility inside their own actions. No, they're just finding ways to make you pay, slowly but surely. Again, particularly pernicious is the decision to ramp a tax over the next few years over those heavy vehicles. It means everything that's transported in the country will end up costing more. While the government does nothing about fuel tax for the people who put fuel in those trucks or you in your car. And then they turn around and, as I say, they have now put luxury car taxes on family-friendly hybrids. Now, I thought we were supposed to be saving the atmosphere. Oh, no, it's only electric cars. But if you want to go for a car that will charge its battery by moving its axles via a hybrid car, meaning you go further and you use less fuel, you will now pay an extra tax. And remember the crap that they were spinning the past couple of days, that magically they've uh, done something special with $10 billion worth of spending that was being spun by their mates in the lefty media, the $10 billion worth of spending cuts were all about fighting inflation? Well, devil in the detail. Three quarters of that headline is rubbish. You see, three quarters of the Treasurer's $9.8 billion in budget cuts is coming from pushing spending on major road or rail projects beyond the four-year forecasts. They have not cut spending. They have not changed anything apart from how it appears on the books. So they're still promising to upgrade a road. It will now just have to wait another four or five years. We're off into the never-never. And they want to turn around and pretend that they're doing something about the federal budget, give us a gold star. When the people who are hurting right now, the people who are hurting as a result of cost of living, are being told by a government for, what, 363 days of the year, oh, cost of living's the main focus, but then for the other two days, to get us to 365 days, when they're actually in a position to announce something, they announce nothing. This is, these people are playing the country for fools. Most of the media is now invested in trying to pretend that the end of the year is not as bad as it looked a couple of weeks ago and the government will bounce back next year. Well, I'm pretty sure that you and I know 
that when things are getting financially worse, yet the government is getting richer because of the amount of tax that it is taking or new taxes that it is inventing, people will not be handing out gold stars. They will see the government for what it is. An operation that is desperate, desperate, to produce surpluses not because it's good for the economy or not because we're paying off debt, but because they then can turn around and say at the next election we're great on the economy because look at the surpluses that we built. Yet the pain that went into the building of those surpluses, apparently you're too stupid to remember your own circumstances. They promised at the last election that everything would be cheaper under a Labor government, that they would do something about cost of living. They have now done nothing twice this year when they're in a position to do so for the middle class. Nothing. Now, if you happen to qualify for some childcare stuff or you happen to be towards the minimum wage, there's a little for you. But these are the same people who in May of this year took $1,500 off you as a guaranteed tax return. These are the people who have stood by and watched petrol go up and up and up and up. Your power bills go up and up and up and up. And nothing is being done to help the consumer at the other end of things. Nothing. And to give you an idea about just how many people are hurting right now in Australia, the people who are being, metaphorically, given the middle finger by the Canberra Club, well, finder.com.au today has released quite a shocking survey suggesting that a third of the country doesn't have any money in the bank. Apparently, the average for people who uh, have got some money in the bank is about 12,000 bucks. Now, while $12,000 sounds like an awful lot of money, you throw in a couple of car repairs or some interest rate rises, guess what? It all disappears. But for a massive section of Australians, they've got nothing. Nothing. This is all because of interest rates, skyrocketing rents, which are punching holes in people's wallets. Finder.com.au revealed that one in three Australians do not have a dollar for emergency services to their name. But the government's got plenty. And the government thinks that you should thank them because they are finding new ways to tax you, either directly or indirectly, so they can try to fool you at a federal election that everything is amazing. It's not. Remember, the projections of this government for the intergenerational report that was put out by Jim Chalmers was that we will have deficits every year for the next 40 years. Now, we're going to go from having a larger surplus this year because of mining taxes, and obviously also the counting of the profits from the Future Fund. They will slowly get themselves over the line with a surplus again next year, and then, as you know, we're off to an early election because that's what every first-term government does. In the meantime, the actual future for Australia, as predicted by Treasury, is deficits that grow and grow and grow for the next 40 freaking years. And believe it or not, Jim Chalmers, again, trying to lie to people that he's doing something magical about inflation that no other country's able to do. One of the really encouraging things about our cost of living help is that the ABS tells us it's making a positive difference uh, to inflation. Uh, whether it's rent, electricity bills, early childhood education, the ABS has made it very clear that our cost of living uh, relief is taking some of the edge off these cost of living pressures rather than adding to inflation, and that's what we designed it to do. Now, again, let's look at data. I try to show you the receipts to give you the information behind the opinion that forms the argument, and arguments that have got the data behind them are very difficult to dismiss. This bloke pretending that they're doing something on inflation. Now, let's be very clear. Remember, while the average rate of inflation for Australia is about 5.4%, power bills are the best part of 20%, petrol, the best part of 10%. Things like food and rent, way above this average. But let's look at the averages. Australia's inflation rate is currently higher than the UK, Singapore, France, Germany, Canada, South Korea, Spain, the United States, Taiwan, Japan, Italy, Switzerland, Belgium and the Netherlands. That's the reality, that we are currently running 15th out of those 15 countries. Also, if you believe the Treasury projections, the suggestion is that we don't get anywhere near where the Reserve Bank needs us to go until the financial year of 2025-26. They are playing us for idiots, but we're not. We see them, we see what they're doing, and they are managing the politics, the headlines. 
where the reality for the average Australian, the average tax-paying Australian, earning average wage with a small amount of money in the bank, taxes increase, direct and indirect. The largest source of revenue to this government is you.